it's been a while since we've gotten some pretty substantial, meaningful content in Destiny 2, and, you know, I have to admit, it has dwindled a little bit for me, but tomorrow is the start of a new season. We have a lot of content coming, including a new raid, but most importantly for the sandbox, we have sandbox changes and new weapons coming out, and this is really interesting because it's been a while since we've gotten a lot of really new weapons and sandbox changes, big sandbox changes, and there's going to be a lot of changes because we have the ace nerf, we have not forgotten changes, we have catalysts coming out for every weapon that hasn't had a catalyst, things are going to be changing pretty drastically, and that's why for this video I want to take a look at all the weapons that I established as go-to weapons and my favorite weapons for the last two seasons. I don't think there was any substantial changes across Black Armory to Season of the Drifter, not, at least not nearly as big as this going into Season of Opulence. And this will be hopefully a cool way to look back at how some weapons were and the sandbox was before some substantial changes. These weapons aren't really ranked in any specific order, these are just my favorite weapons and I'll be talking about the key loadouts that I used with them. So for the first weapon I'm going to talk about, let's just get this out of the way quickly. I know you guys know I use this all the time. It's Twilight Oath. This is the sniper since the beginning of Forsaken has been my favorite sniper. I've racked up over 35,000 kills on this now and I still think it's one of the best, if not the best sniper in the game. It's got an incredibly low scope, a fast rate of fire, which by the way, at this current moment is able to use two body shot which is absolutely insane with its 140 RPM rate of fire. It has pretty good aim assist, an overall pretty wide FOV scope, and offers top tier perks like snapshot, firmly planted, or opening shot. I use Twilight Oath most frequently with Ace of Spades or The Last Word, and occasionally Sturm as well. A newcomer to my favorites list from Season of the Drifter is Soul Survivor. This is the Gambit Prime or Reckoning Sniper, and this is a lot better than I anticipated it being. It's the Supremacy Zoom, which is the second lowest to Twilight Oath, which is incredible. It's ideally what you want because Twilight Oath is the only sniper that can get as low zoom as it has. So with the right zoom level, and it has top tier perks. It is a 90 RPM sniper, but I really love the feeling of this sniper. I can't quite describe it. I felt the range bonus was truly, truly noticeable. And opening shot on this weapon was incredibly, dare I say, disgustingly consistent. I've yet to get one, but snapshot and opening shot is a combination on the sniper already with a pretty good stat package and really nice range. So it's incredible just crazy consistent and that's why the sniper has made it as one of my most used snipers now. Twilight Oath is a very short range sniper which is great because it's super versatile and close range but I definitely noticed the lack of range sometimes at farther distances so that's when on some maps I equip Soul Survivor or depending on how I'm feeling for the day, I'll equip Soul Survivor if I'm looking for just a bit more range capability. I have just about over 21,000 kills with the Chaperone, however, I don't use it anymore. The reason being is because good bone structure with the roll I got, which I'll talk about in a moment, is absolutely insanely consistent and most importantly versatile. It is far more versatile than that of the Chaperone. My good bone structure has Assault Mag, Quick Draw, and Opening Shot with a bunch of range perks and an Icarus mod, which means I get Quick Draw on a shotgun, which is insanely valuable for being able to play more defensively with it and quickly clean up kills. It has Opening Shot to ensure that I'm getting the most bullet magnetism and range possible within that 11 meter kind of optimal range that'll one shot to the head and Icarus mod which makes an insane a crazy difference for slug shotties being able to use a slug shotty and peg opponents in the head have in your accuracy not be just confined to boots on the ground makes a world of difference so the slight little deficit in range and of course the giving up chaperones maximum potential range with roadborne is kind of difficult but I see this versatility as much more valuable overall in the grand scheme of a match. It's consistency and versatility versus peak potential. For me, the good bone structure is the shotgun to be using, and for this reason, I don't use any other shotgun anymore. I'm convinced I don't really need one. Being the only legendary shotgun I use, I use it with whatever weapon combination would warrant a shotgun. Sturm and good bone structure, ace and good bone structure. Outbreak with good bone structure. I was so wrong about Izanagi's burden, and I even made a video about how wrong I was, and I'll never let it go. 
but it's actually my favorite weapon in Destiny 2 currently. Aesthetically, in terms of the fantasy that goes around it and the way it looks, and the functionality. It's just incredible. It's satisfying to use. It has a decently low scope zoom. It doesn't have quick draw right now, so I combo with Dragon Shadow. We'll see how the catalyst maybe affect this. It doesn't have snapshot or quick draw at this moment. So it does have some drawbacks, but it's incredibly satisfying to use. It's a great kinetic sniper in a kind of sea of snipers that I dislike using. I don't really have any kinetic snipers that I truly like using other than this. So it's my default kinetic sniper. And being able to body shot people, and more importantly, kill supers is truly incredible and the reason to be using the weapon. Izanagi's Burden and Recluse is a stupidly explosive lethal combination and is one of the main ways I use this weapon. And then if I need something more consistent overall, Izanagi's Burden and Not Forgotten does the job. I don't think this weapon needs an explanation, but Not Forgotten is my top hand cannon. It feels incredible to use, super pinpoint, super accurate, no jarring recoil. It feels amazing and it's so satisfying to get three taps and two taps and land your shots and place them effectively and be rewarded for that. I absolutely love the weapon for that. I think of it kind of as the Halo Magnum of the Destiny series, although the weapon's getting some pretty substantial changes in this next season. So we'll have to see how it performs. I mainly pair Not Forgotten with Iznagi's Burden, Chaperone, or Toil and Trouble. Ace of Spades is a weapon that I had about 6,000 kills with and still struggled to understand how to use the weapon effectively. I wasn't very good with it, but recently, within the last month, I've really become addicted to it. It's by no means the best on controller and definitely has some pretty jarring recoil, but there's something about learning when to shoot specifically and time your shots perfectly that really make it satisfying and that feedback of getting a headshot and going into Memento Mori to just put out such raw high damage is just so addicting. It's incredibly good for that high damage output. Now I'd say on controller, it's definitely not a dueling weapon. You don't want to overextend into one-on-one -on -one scenarios. You want to focus on just putting those very high damage shots into targets and cleaning up enemies with headshots. Just focus on landing your shots precisely and not spamming and just cleaning up and putting in damage, man, it's just so addicting and so versatile when you get the hang of this. Service Revolver is a weapon I finally got a great roll on, got a ton of range perks, and of course, Kill Clip, which kind of serves as our pseudo Not Forgotten going into next update. Since Not Forgotten is getting a nerf, we're able to preserve the potential of that 0.67 TTK with three shots through the service revolver, except here it does require a kill. What I love about this weapon though, why it's become a go-to is it's a legendary hand cannon in the kinetic slot, which I feel like I don't have a lot of good weapons, or legendaries rather, in the kinetic slot. So now that opens up weapons like exotic snipers, like Borealis maybe if I wanted to try that, or Telesto, or Lord of Wolves, which is very, very powerful, or even exotic heavy weapons if I wanted. I mainly use Service Revolver with Lord of Wolves, or I use it with Goodbone Structure and Darcy. The last word is a top weapon of mine, because as a sniper, how could you ignore it? It's just an insanely good weapon in close range. It rewards a disciplined trigger finger at a little bit of longer range, just like medium range for it, but up close, a four tap body kill is pretty insane. Because of its lack of range, I definitely do still feel at a disadvantage compared to maybe other controller users with Not Forgotten, or mouse and keyboard users with Ace, or even mouse and keyboard users with The Last Word. I don't feel like I can really compete with any of those, which makes me really have to double down on my sniping and be very picky and choosy with where I challenge from with The Last Word. I usually pair this with Twilight Oath or Soul Survivor, but I don't use it as frequently as Ace of Spades now. That, and I find that it's pretty much mandatory for me to be using Lucky Pants with it to try and help decrease some of that bloom. Outbreak Prime came out recently and solidified itself as my main ranged primary weapon. It just feels so consistent. It's not crazy lethal, but it's got this level of consistency that I don't really see much in the Destiny 2 sandbox. It's got pretty low and consistent recoil with very high stability. It feels very pinpoint. It deals with flinch exceptionally well, and it's definitely got quite a bit of bullet magnetism, but I think that's what helps it feel so consistent. I mainly use Outbreak Prime with good bone structure. Suros Regime is the last weapon on my favorites in go-to list because the catalyst fixed all of the issues I had with the weapon. 
The weapon absolutely shreds. It's a high impact auto rifle in terms of damage output with the focus fire or whatever dual speed receiver, whatever they're calling it now. But it has a stat package that's not at all limited to that of any of the other high impact autos and completely exceeds them to feel amazing. It both feels amazing, it feels very consistent, but has a very high damage output for an auto rifle, which makes it quite good. I usually use Cirrus Regime with good bone structure as well, but occasionally with a sniper. So what was missing from this list that I really would have loved to see on it? Well, Sturm, Crimson, and Mida, I think are probably my top three that I would have wanted on this list. I love these weapons. Sturm, I think that the high impact hand cannons and maybe even Sunshot as well, but high impact hand cannons I think are just being outclassed right now by things like Ace of Spades, The Last Word, Thorn, and other hand cannons that just have absurd aim assist values and crazy range and perks. It's just kind of outclassed at the moment. I want to make this weapon work, but I wasn't really able to make it work too considerably well compared to the weapons that I mentioned in these two seasons, Season of the Drifter and Black Armory. What's struggling even more right now though is scout rifles. I think with the exception of the 150 RPM scout rifles, which I think are very, very good and underrated right now, I think other scout rifles like the Mida archetype are really suffering. Again, I think they're completely outclassed right now by pulses like the aggressive burst pulses and the range of pulses, and I think their TTK or maybe you know, shots to kill requirement is just not on par with other weapons. Flinch just ruins them way too much in my opinion. Mida right now is just not cutting it. It's not good enough compared to the hand cannons we have and compared to the pulses that we have. Not to mention that the Mida Catalyst is probably the most useless, redundant thing in the entire game. Outlaw on Mida could have been a billion other more creative perks that lended to the fantasy of the weapon and the functionality of the weapon. I'd really like to see this change since they're putting more emphasis on Catalyst once again. Mida has got to be updated. Finally, we have Crimson. This is one of my favorite weapons in the game as well, aesthetically, and just the fantasy again behind the weapon but it was kind of left in the dust ever since Forsaken. I want this to be a part of my top 10 go-to weapons. I want this to be good. I want this pseudo hand cannon, pulse rifle, burst hand cannon thing that heals you to be one of my best weapons. Because hypothetically, on paper, the more I think of it, I love the idea of the weapon. However, it just doesn't perform well. When the Forsaken change happened and the TTK change happened, Crimson was left at the TTK it had back in Warmind. Originally in Warmind, the TTK it has now was for low resilience in Warmind. They just made that the high resilience TTK now in post Forsaken weapon changes. That in combination with the fact that it flinches weirdly, this weird kind of flinch model, as a burst weapon that hurts it tremendously, it makes it not very functional and not the most usable in PvP, and I'd love to see that change, make it just a little bit more powerful so it can contend a lot of the weapons that we have now, like the big three hand cannons, Ace, Last Word, and Thorn. Anyways guys, what were your top weapon loadouts and favorite weapons to be using in these past two seasons? I'd like to see them in the comments below, and what weapons would you have liked to have be more viable and part of your top weapons for these last two seasons but weren't? Like I said, for me it was Crimson, Mida, and Sturm. What about you guys? Let me know in the comments. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. I'm excited for tomorrow and all the content to come. I'll see you guys later.